take a run through problem 94a on fixed overhead variances. Fixed overhead variances are not any harder than the material, labor, or variable overhead variances we've already learned. They're just different. And because they're different, my students tend to struggle on this one. Well, just one piece of this one. And we'll get to that in a minute. But let's read through the problem and I'll show you the easy part and then I'll spend some time explaining the harder part. XYZ company manufactures tables. The company budgets fixed overhead to be $10,000 for the month of August. The company applies overhead costs to jobs on the basis of direct labor hours. Okay, so if we're given this type of information in an accounting question, you always want to be trying to calculate predetermined overhead rates if you can. So it says estimated overhead is $10,000. It applies overhead on the basis of direct labor hours. So we're going to take our estimated overhead divided by our estimated direct labor hours and that will be a useful number in the question so we'll use it in a few minutes but ten thousand dollars is our estimated overhead what is our estimated labor hours i don't know let's read on the company is the following direct labor standards it expects each table is going to take two hours to make and the company anticipates making a thousand tables okay so two hours to make it's a thousand tables two thousand labor hours and in fact that's what the next sentence says direct labor workers are budgeted to work for two thousand hours okay so two thousand direct labor hours means our fixed overhead cost is five dollars per direct labor hour this is a strange calculation to do because it's fixed overhead right we wouldn't expect it to go up and down with the amount of work that's what makes a fixed cost fixed but in any event we we do it and i'll explain why in a moment during august the company produced 1200 tables and the workers worked the total of 2200 hours actual fixed overhead was 10,500. okay so the first prong of this is actually very straightforward you will generally be given the actual costs and we were, the actual cost is 10,500, so that's our actual, no math. Beautiful. What about our budget? Well, actually the company budgets fixed overhead is 10,000. So there we go. We don't need to do any calculations. These will generally be given numbers in the question and it was here. So comparing the two is very straightforward. We just go, I actually spent 10,500 on fixed overhead. I budgeted to spend 10,000. The difference is 500. The question is, is this good or bad? Well, I spent more than I was planning to spend. This is bad. This is unfavorable, a $500 unfavorable budget variance. I blew the budget for fixed overhead by 500 bucks. That's what that's saying. The applied piece, I want to explain it a bit. And actually I want to explain volume variance. Big picture, volume variance just means if you have a fixed cost and you make a lot more product than you were planning to, your fixed cost spreads out over more products and that's good. If you make fewer products, your fixed cost doesn't spread out as much and that's bad. And the way I think about this one is I think about my ski pass. Uh, at my ski hill, now these numbers are a little bit off, they're actually higher in real life, but just I used 100,000 because it's even and it's easy to explain. At my ski hill, Skiing costs $100 a day. Or you can buy an unlimited pass and ski as much as you want for the season and the unlimited pass is $1,000. Now, I skied last year 25 times. I had 25 ski days. So, I of course planned, I knew I was gonna ski a lot more. Uh, the 10 days would be when you kind of break even on this. I knew I was gonna ski a much higher volume and I feel good about it, right? At the end of the day, year, I sort of looked up online. I said, oh, I skied 25 times. Isn't that good? Now, could I put a number on the goodness? Well, one way of putting a number on the goodness would be, well, you could say, well, if I bought day passes 25 times, this would be $2,500 I would pay, but I only paid a thousand. So I saved, saved, uh, $1,500, right? $1,500 favorable variance because I spread out my fixed cost of a thousand over many extra ski trips. I took way more ski trips than I needed to. And therefore I got very good value out of my ski pass. Well, same thought process here. If we make more units of whatever it is we're making, 
that's good for volume variance because it means our fixed costs spread out over more units. If I make fewer, that's bad for volume variance. So what did we do? We planned to make a thousand tables. We actually made 1200 tables. I can tell you this is a favorable variance. If you made more than you plan to, you got a favorable volume variance. If you made less than you plan to, you got an unfavorable volume variance. How do I do the calculation now? Now that long explanations out of the way, how do I do the calculation? It's an SQ SP calculation. Uh, so SP is our hourly rate for fixed overhead. It is a weird thing to calculate, but that's our SP, $5 per direct labor hour. SQ says, given the actual number of tables made, how many hours should it have taken? So given that I made 1,200 tables and each table is supposed to take two hours, this should have taken 2,400 direct labor hours, right? So 2,400 times five is $12,000. So let's compare the two. The budget is 10, the applied is 12,000. We're off by 2,000. This is favorable. This is a favorable variance. Why is it favorable? Because I made more tables than I was planning to. This is a $2,000 favorable volume variance. Now in total, our overhead variance is 1500 favorable, right? 2000 to the good, 500 to the bad, we're 1500 to the good overall. But there you go. We've calculated our fixed overhead variances. As always, I hope the videos help. And if they do help you, I hope you'll help me too. Have a great day. Hopefully I'm out of these cool glasses soon. My eyes are uh, giving me trouble, but uh, I should be back on track soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.